Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I was asked if I could do a video demonstrating how to use Photoshop to give an image a painterly look. They didn't really specify if they wanted an oil painting look or a watercolor look. And to tell you the truth, this really isn't my area of expertise. I did learn how to do a specific technique a long time ago using Photoshop CS5. Since then, Photoshop has changed considerably, and I had to modify that technique so that it would work with this current version of Photoshop, but I'm happy to show it to you in this video. With that said, I'm sure there are better tutorials out there that show how to create a more realistic oil painting look or watercolor look, and I encourage you to look those up. What I'm hoping for is that my video at least teaches you some Photoshop techniques you didn't know before. Okay, so we're going to be working on this image. And the first thing you need to do is duplicate the background layer. I'm going to hit Command J on my Mac. It's Control J on a PC. Now we need to give this layer a painterly look, not necessarily a good painterly look. We're going to go up to Filter, and we're going to go down to Filter Gallery. And what we want to do is go to the Artistic section, and we want one of two, either palette knife or dry brush. Either one will work. They give different looks. Let's try palette knife first. And you can see the look that gives. And you could come over and move these three sliders and see if you could change the look enough. You have to wait for it to render, though. It will take a second or two to render. And you can see how it's affecting the image. Let's let it go. So that one might be is just a bit too harsh. Let's try the dry brush and let that render. And you can see that one doesn't look too bad. Let's take texture down a little maybe. Maybe somewhere in the middle. Something like that. Just a little bit. I'm kind of tweaking around with the texture slider. Okay, let's go with that. So this kind of gives it this painterly look, not necessarily a nice painterly look. Now, we have this look. Now our next step is optional. For some images it works great, for others it doesn't, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna duplicate this layer, we're gonna hit Command or Control J again, and then what we're going to do is we're again going to go up to Filter and again going to go to the Filter Gallery. But this time we're not gonna go to the Artistic section, we're gonna go to the Sketch section, and we're gonna go to the Charcoal. We're gonna give it this charcoal look. And then again you could mess around with some of these sliders here. What you want is more of an outline. Um, you want to kind of hit the edges. Let's see what it does. And maybe something like that. So then we'll click OK. So now we have this charcoal sketch over the top of everything. Now we want to change the blend mode of this layer. So go to the blend modes right here. And you could try, you just go down and it will give you a look. Um, you know, as you hover over each of the different blend modes, you'll see it. So there's darken, there's multiply, uh, there's linear burn, there's darker color, there's light. None of these lightened ones probably will work. The overlay, the soft light, and so on. I think I liked probably the darker color one. Now again, this is optional. There's before we did that and after we did that. You can see it just kind of adds more kind of brush stroke look to the darker parts of the image. Now we need to give it some texture. So I found a Adobe stock image that is canvas, but it has some color on it. I specifically want this color to be up here in all this blank area above or behind, behind the model. So what I'm going to do is go back to this image and I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to image rotation and I'm going to, um, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to spin it around so the color part is on top. Then I have the move tool. The keyboard shortcut is the V key for the move tool. Click on the canvas, drag it up to this tab, and then hold the shift key down and you'll drop it down right in the middle. Now you can see that this canvas happens to be considerably smaller than the original image. So we need to resize it. So we're going to go into free transform mode by hitting Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. Now what I want to do is I want to move it down from the top just a little bit so that we have just the colors up there. 
Now I need it to stretch it out left and right. If I just come in and grab one of the middle handles here and start stretching it, it makes the entire thing larger. I don't want that. I want the color to stay at the top and I don't want it to go off the top. So to do that, I'm going to hold the shift key in when I grab one of these handles and you can see that that allows me to stretch it out like that. Now it's stretched out. Now again we're going to affect the blend mode. First we'll click this little check mark up at the top. Then we'll go to the blend modes and again you just hover over them. There's what darken looks like. There's multiply, color burn, linear burn, uh, darker color, kind of like that one I think. None of these light ones. Then the overlay ones may the ones here may give you a look you like. Not really. So it's going to be one of these ones up here. I'd say it's between darken, multiply, and darker color. What do you think? Let's, let's go with multiply, I guess. And then if you want, you could go to the opacity slider and maybe try to bring opacity down a little bit. Maybe that'll make it look a little better. Then I had mentioned that this step right here where we did the charcoal sketch of the model, that is optional. Try it without it by just turning it off. Turn off that layer by clicking on the eyeball. So there's before we did the charcoal sketch and there's after the charcoal sketch. I like the charcoal sketch. So this gives a look. <laughs> I'm um, not necessarily uh, looks a painting, but it gives a look and it gives a canvas look. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, as I mentioned at the top, uh, doing this video just taught you something about Photoshop you didn't know before, and this might help you when you're doing a different type of project, not necessarily trying to get a painterly look. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>